If you've been scrolling through Twitter this week, you may well have come across racing singing contests, the furlong factor. There's been a lot of talent on show and it's been a lot of fun, but there is a serious message behind it. We caught up with Gemma Waterhouse, the Chief Operating Officer of Racing Welfare, to tell us a little bit more about why they launched the competition. Racing Welfare is at the centre of welfare provision for the racing industry. We look after stable staff, stud staff, um, people who work in race courses, in administration, in media. Um, and normally we help around two and a half thousand people a year on a normal year for racing welfare. This year, we're only a third of the way through and we've already helped 3,000 people. The furlong factor, the concept of it is uh, we put out a request for auditions. We got 80 auditions in, which was an amazing response. We can't believe you know, just how many people in racing are talented and brave enough to send in their songs. Sunlight comes creeping in, illuminates our skin. We watch the day go by, stories of all we did. It's closer than my hands have been. We got it down to 24 and those 24 went through to the live heats that started on last Wednesday and ran until Monday night. Um, we've got six finalists and then our celebrity judge JJ from Union J has taken through two wild cards. So we've got eight people going through to the final, um, which is perfect for a tote pool, which will be run during the final. So people can get involved by watching, voting, betting, but hopefully also donating. So like so many businesses, when this crisis hit, we needed to reforecast and work out what the impact on racing welfare would be. Um, in doing that, it painted a pretty bleak picture. Uh, we raise all our funds ourselves and we ho host a whole load of fundraising events throughout the year that raise up to a million pounds for us, which is fantastic. But with this virus now hitting the world and us not being able to bring people together for these kind of events, we're set to lose that money. So certainly um, about half a million will be gone between now and August. So I was um, looking on social media and I saw Deirdre and Angus Johnston um, singing uh, beautifully, their wonderful musical duo, and it got me thinking about the idea of having a singing competition in racing, and that's where the Furlong Factor came from. So Rod Street is a trustee of Racing Welfare and heads up GBR. So I got on the phone to him and we had a, a chat about the concept and how it might work. And we moved forward with that. We got Sky Sports Racing to come on board as a media partner. We got sponsorship from the Tote to help make it happen and enable us to give some prize money and some incentive for people to be brave and put some auditions in. And that's, that's where it all started. So our services are really, really important right now. We have been allocated some funds from the Racing Foundation and a bunch of other charities that have come together to support this crisis and we are well positioned to distribute those funds to the people who need them most because we have the mechanism, we have the systems in place to be able to do that effectively. But that doesn't help racing welfare in itself. That's just taking money from this fantastic pot that's been made available and giving it to the people who need it. But racing welfare in itself still needs to run. So we need to raise money and we need to make, raise it quickly to be able to continue to provide this very essential provision for the racing industry. The Furlong Factor this Saturday, Sky Sports Racing at five o'clock and it's across our social media channels. So we want people to watch, get involved. We've got new material from all of the finalists and we need you to bet, we need you to vote and we need you to donate. So please help us help people in racing. Bye.